Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the goals for this course. So I want to jump in and really kind of define who I think the ideal student for this course is. Most importantly, I want to tell you who I don't think should be taking this course. I don't want to waste your time and I want to make sure we all have a clear understanding of what we're going to accomplish in this course. After that, we're going to jump into kind of an overview of what this whole course is, section by section, what we're going to do, kind of building on the last section. Uh, again, just so you get a really good idea of what the goals for this course are. So let's jump on in with some prerequisites here. First and foremost, you should be a Java developer. You need to know Java, uh, at least at some type of uh, intermediate language level. And this is important. I don't need you to be a rock star Java developer. I'm not myself, so you don't need to be either. And I, I really think you just need to have a fundamental understanding of the Java language. Now, you can write Spring applications in other languages like Kotlin or Groovy, but we're going to be using Java specifically for the entire course here. It would also be nice if you had a little bit of an experience building web applications, uh, some type of foundation for web development. Maybe you have done uh, static sites before. Maybe you've used something else like PHP or, or some other uh, Ruby on Rails. And maybe you're just coming over to the Java language and, and want to learn how to build Java applications on the web. So just kind of a little bit of a foundation of web, web development will be helpful as well. And then I need you at least to have heard of the Spring Framework or Spring Boot. And I do want to get a misconception out of the way real quick. People uh, often think that they need to be some kind of Spring Framework rock star to start building applications. And that's just not true. You can use Spring Boot to kick up an application really quick and then kind of learn as you go. And that's what we're going to do in this course. So you do not need to be a rock star anywhere here. Uh, if you've just heard of them, that, that would be helpful to me. If you want to see some of the features uh, in Spring Framework 5 and Spring Boot 2, we're going to cover uh, some of them. So I'll, I'll highlight those as we're going throughout the course. But if you want to see what, what some of the new features are, we'll touch on those. So this course is not for you if you are looking for a Spring Framework deep dive. So if you want this whole history of the Spring Framework and every little annotation and how to configure everything, like we're just not going to go into that. And I don't think you need to. I mean, this is, you don't, people get bored learning all that stuff without any practical use. So what we're going to do is build a practical application and you're going to learn these different concepts as we go throughout the course. Um, if you need a detailed explanation of every new feature in Spring Framework 5 and Spring Boot 2. Uh, again, this is not for you. We're going to cover some of the new features, but this is not a deep dive or a what's new uh, in both of those. And again, if you're a Spring Boot, uh, Spring Boot Pro, this probably isn't for you. If you've been writing Spring Boot applications for a while, this really isn't for you. Uh, the title of the course is Getting Started with Spring Boot uh, 2. So again, probably not for you. Okay, so now we got that out of the way, let's kind of talk about the objectives within the course and what each section is going to cover. So first we're going to really talk about the project that we're going to build in this course. So we'll, we'll talk about what it is, um, we'll maybe mock up some UI elements, talk about the database layer, things like that. We're going to cover what we want to build. We want to have some type of plan going in before we just start writing code. Um, and then we're going to use a GitHub repository. So we're going to get a little uh, practical example of using Git. I'm going to show you how I use Git. Uh, we'll create a new uh, Git repository. I'll show you my branching strategies. So as we're working on sections, I'll work on a feature on a branch, and then we'll merge it back in uh, to the master branch. So we'll look at that. And again, I think this is something really good if you're uh, trying to get a job somewhere, uh, understanding kind of uh, uh, the workflow there, whether the company uses Git or Subversion or whatever they use, just having that kind of practical knowledge uh, using something like Git, Git and GitHub uh, will be really good. So we'll cover that. We'll also go through some Spring Boot essentials, uh, things like DevTools, logging and debugging, and the actuator. 
uh, we'll talk about building out our model for our MVC applications. So the model is kind of the domain model, like how do we model our objects in our system, like the different uh, classes, uh, the different entities. We'll, we'll go through and actually talk about those and define relationships between them and that sort of thing. Then we'll get into the database layer. We're going to be using a H2 in-memory database as we go throughout the course. Now, when we get into going to production, which I'll cover in a few, then we'll get into a, a more real world database that we can look at. We'll talk about the controller level. So the controller level in any MVC app is like the air traffic controller, just kind of guiding um, your application along on where it can go get stuff from. So we'll talk about the controller and the different methods you may write and uh, kind of the different arguments that, that you have available um, in, your, in your controllers. And so we'll look at that kind of stuff. And then in any real world application, you're probably gonna have some type of security. Uh, so you may have a user login, or user registration. Uh, you may wanna have uh, certain roles to those users. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of lock down our application and make sure that only secure people can add stuff to the database. So we'll look at the spring security level. Then we'll look at the service layer. So you don't really wanna do a lot of business logic in your uh, controllers, and that's kind of where the service layer is, is, is really good at. And so we'll talk about creating new services and what kind of business logic goes there, what kind of, um, what, what data lives there, that kind of thing. We'll look at the view layer. So we're going to use Timeleaf in this course. Uh, there are plenty of other templating options if you wish to use them, but we're going to use Timeleaf, and I'll kind of show you how to create different views for, for all the different things that we're trying to do here. And then finally, we'll kind of wrap up this course and just kind of talk about what's next, what we, can, what we didn't cover, so we can kind of talk about that too. So this is, that's pretty much the course here. I feel really good about this. I'm really excited to go through this journey with you and I hope you are too. So with that, uh, let's get into uh, the next lesson.